Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we looked at the extended bicubic surface type in the Action 3D Compositor. In this video, we'll discuss the explicit relationship between the vertices on the surface and UV points on the texture. It is crucial to understand their implications and how to use them in various compositing scenarios. We will also go through all the various modes for moving vertices and UV points in the different action views. So to understand the relationship between the surface vertices and texture UV points, I am going to draw on an existing compositing analogy. In Flame Premium, you have the ability to do warping and morphing. With the concept of warping and morphing, you always have a source grid and a destination grid. The source and destination grids are identical and permanently linked to each other. To expand on this, each point on the source grid is directly connected to its corresponding point on the destination grid. So if the source grid and destination grids are identical, no warping occurs. If the shape of the source or destination grid differs from the other, this will cause the warping effect. This is the basic premise of warping and morphing in any software. This analogy can also be applied to the action surface types. Think of the texture UV points as the source grid, and the surface's vertices as the destination grid. If they remain identical, no warping will appear. But as soon as the grids differ in shape, warping will occur. Now with regular warping and morphing, both source and destination grids are normally in 2D space. However, with the action surfaces, the UV points are in 2D space, but the vertices operate in 3D space. And this allows for the source and destination grids to be manipulated in a variety of ways not normally associated with 2D warping tools. So let's look at the different manipulations you can apply. We'll start off by moving vertices. This is done using the standard SELECT mode in the Tools menu. If you've never done this before, you can physically distort the surface in 3D space. Note that only the vertices are moving in the result view. The UV points in the object view remain unchanged. Since both sets of points are always linked, you can see the distortion occurring on the image surface. This is pretty much in line with what existing artists have done in the past on Flame Premium and Smoke Advanced. So let's go over to the object view and move the UV points. By only moving the UV points, you can slide the texture over the map's surface using the object view. This gives you a clear distraction-free experience outside of the 3D view. But looking at the result view, the vertices of the 3D surface are not moving. Therefore, the physical shape does not change. However, the texture is warping because the corresponding vertex remains linked to the altered UV point. This would be the equivalent to the old Edit Offsets functionality in the bilinear surface. So unlike previous versions of Flame Premium and Smoke Advanced, this functionality is now available in all vertex-driven surface types. And in both cases of moving either vertices or UV points separately, this is comparable to the source and destination warping workflows I spoke of earlier. The next manipulation allows you to lock the vertices and UV point grids together and move them as one. In the Tools menu, choose Move UV Vertex. This is mapped to Shift L. So with the vertex and UV points locked together, you can move either point and no distortions or warping will occur. Coming back to my analogy of the source and destination grid warper, this is the equivalent of linking and moving the source and destination grid. A great use of this functionality is to warp a localized area of a frame. The same frame is loaded into a media entry as well as the background. As an example using this mode, you can position the vertices over an area on the frame you wish to warp. This allows you to focus on that specific area. And as soon as you switch back to SELECT mode and start moving vertices separately again, the warping effect will occur. 
You can now see how easy it is to do localized warping and you don't have to subdivide the surface multiple times to localize the area of the frame. You could use these techniques to perhaps extend a wall, lift up a model's cheekbones, or even create organic effects by scaling and rotating the vertices. I hope you see the potential. The last manipulation we are going to look at is Slide Texture. This is mapped to Shift S. This mode is comparable to moving UV points with the Select mode. However, the big difference is that the Slide Texture mode allows you to move UV points in the Result view as well as the Object view. The idea behind this mode is fine-tuning texture positioning on the surface. Now let's switch to a 1-up view with ALT-1 because we don't need the Object view with this mode. Putting this in context, you are sliding the texture to align it to the vertices deformation on the surface. So if you have a displaced surface like this, you can refine the UV points to accurately position the texture on the surface. This was not easily achievable in previous versions. Taking this idea a bit further, let's say you have been snapping the vertex points of a surface to a 3D point cloud. Next, you can slide the texture to correctly wrap it around the surface. I have a few last points to mention about the vertices and UV points before we conclude this video. Firstly, both the vertices and UV points can be manipulated with the Magnet mode. You can change the mode in the Tools menu or press SHIFT M. Hovering over vertex or UV points will highlight them allowing you to do a more organic warp. As a reminder, press CTRL S and drag to size the magnet. Lastly, I wanted to point out that both the vertices and UV points can be tracked to a surface. Depending what you track will yield different results. But I'll save that for another video. Coming up next, we'll look at a few more options that have been added as a result of this exposed functionality. This includes extending your texture beyond the original surface. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.